Hey, this is Larkin Rose, and I just had to quick throw together a video about an article I wrote uh, many weeks ago, actually, called When Should You Shoot a Cop? It was published on copblock.org, and it has since made national news uh, at least two or three times. Now, of course, the title When Should You Shoot a Cop is going to make people freak out, and it seems that hardly anybody actually read the article but just did the the knee-jerk reaction. Um, in fact, I'm going to read you the first paragraph of the article because it perfectly sums up the way most people responded. Again, the title was, When Should You Shoot a Cop? That question, even without an answer, makes most law-abiding taxpayers go into knee-jerk conniptions. The indoctrinated masses all race to see who can be first and loudest to proclaim that it is never okay to forcibly resist law enforcement. In doing so, they also inadvertently demonstrate why so much of human history has been plagued by tyranny and oppression. Now, a few weeks ago, apparently somebody printed out the entire article and was handing out copies or leaving them lying around at an Occupy uh, Phoenix, I think it was, something down in Arizona. Um, it wasn't me who handed them out. Uh, had I been there, it would have been. Um, so somebody handed them out and it made national news that, oh, look what they're handing out at the, the Occupy this, that, or the other thing, events. And I heard tell that Glenn Beck read some of the letter. Of course, he didn't read the whole thing, and I don't think he gave the name to make sure people couldn't actually look it up to see what else it said. I should quick mention how the, the mainstream media, when it reported this, in a lot of places they talked as if, we, we think we might know who wrote this article, as if it was some clandestine conspiracy. I wrote it, it has my name on it, it's out in public, I say these things in public all the time. I don't speak for the Tea Party, I don't speak for Occupy Wall Street, I speak for me. And if you don't like what I say, try addressing what I say instead of having tantrums about things I didn't say. Now, what was fascinating to me is that as soon as this made it in the media that this was being handed out at an Occupy whatever event, the right-wing statists all jumped on board to say, see what these Occupy Wall Street types are like? They want violence, they want lawlessness. And I hate to break it to you, but I'm not one of the Occupy Wall Street types. Almost as quickly, the left-wing statists turned around and said, no, 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 that's what the Tea Party believes. That's what you right-wing statists believe. So basically, I wrote something. Two groups who don't believe what I believe started pointing their fingers at each other, saying, this is what you believe, this is what you believe. So, grow a spine. If you want to point fingers, point it at me, because I'm the one who wrote it, and I don't believe what either of those groups believe. We have a few things in common on both sides, but before you point a finger and have a tantrum, try actually reading the thing, instead of complaining about things you guess I might have said. One of the main themes of the article is that throughout history, most mass evil has not been done in spite of law enforcement. It's been done in the name of law enforcement. You look at the regimes of, of Stalin and Mao and Hitler and Pol Pot and go right down the list. What they did, they called law. They legislated it, and then they had their law enforcers go out and implement evil. So, when people say, oh, that's horrible, it's dangerous, apparently Glenn Beck said this is the dangerous stuff that's out there, is talking about forcible resistance. Oh, really, what's the alternative? The alternative is that absolutely anything a government wants to do to you, you have to let it. No matter what. It wants to pile you on cattle cars, well, it's totally evil to talk about resisting, so we better not. It wants to shut everybody up, wants to disarm everybody wants to make it a practice to randomly search people and then interrogate them and, uh, for no good reason, well, you have to just let them, because apparently it's uncivilized to talk about actually resisting. Now, earlier, before the Arizona thing, down in South Carolina, uh, some Republican, uh, I think it was Kershaw County Republican Party, whatever, somebody there clicked like on my article, like on Facebook. Which doesn't mean I absolutely agree with everything, it just means, hey, look at this. And a bunch of other Republicans in the in Kershaw County Republican Party just had a fit. Oh, we can't have this, we must drum him out. Rah, 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 rah. Because they're unthinking, spineless, brainless cowards. And let me tell you why I say that. And why Glenn Beck is an absolute hypocrite and an intellectual wimp. 
because he also said, this is dangerous, we can't have this, let's not talk about this. Let's go through some of the other people that uh, Glenn Beck should shun, that the South Carolina Republicans should shun, that the mainstream media, left and right, everybody, shun these people, condemn them as evil and horrible, and don't associate yourself with them in any way. Number one, Thomas Jefferson, who said that no people can preserve liberty unless, quote, its rulers are warned from time to time that this people preserve the spirit of resistance. And then he specifically said, let the people take up arms. What do you think he was talking about? Going like this? Waving guns around? He was talking about the possibility of using violence against the state to resist tyranny. Number two, George Washington. You better condemn him and shun him and don't talk about him anymore. Because he openly advocated that the people should always be more heavily armed than, quote, any who might attempt to abuse them, which in, would include their own government, end quote. In other words, George Washington wanted the people to be able to win in a shootout with their own government. Now, you may not like to hear that. You may not like to talk about it. It's not a very pleasant subject when you talk about using deadly force. But this is going to be a pretty long list of people that you have to condemn and distance yourself from, whether you're on the left or the right, if you think it's totally horrible to discuss the use of physical force against law enforcement. Number three, James Madison. Uh, he advocating had he advocated having a militia which greatly outnumbered and outgunned the government's own soldiers, saying that, quote, a militia thus circumstanced could never be conquered by such a proportion of regular troops. In the creation of this country, they were planning on having the people retain the ability to violently resist their own government. If you don't like to hear that, tough turds. They all talked about it. Number four, Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. What do you think that meant? Give me liberty or I'll whine a little bit and vote later on? As another quick aside, when Patrick Henry spoke of liberty, he said, quote, unfortunately, nothing will preserve it but downright force. Whenever you give up that force, you are ruined. He wasn't talking about petitions and elections and working within the system. He was saying freedom requires forcible defense. Benjamin Franklin said that democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch and added that liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the outcome of the vote. Got that? He was talking about the use of violence to fight against a democratically appointed but tyrannical government. Alexander Hamilton uh, said he wanted uh, average citizens to be armed uh, so they could, quote, stand ready to defend their rights and those of their fellow citizens against their government's own enforcers, to be armed against your own government. Well, you better never mention Alexander Hamilton again because he's nasty and horrible and we can't have any talk about that. Noah Webster openly discussed the use of violence against law enforcers when he opined that the United States government, quote, cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword because the whole body of the people are armed and constitute a force superior to any band of regular troops that can be on any pretense raised in the United States. And he added that Congress, because of that, Congress can, quote, execute no laws but such as the people perceive to be just and constitutional. What was he talking about? He was talking about the people deciding that their own government was doing something unconstitutional and resisting using guns. If you don't like the discussion, fine. Just don't pretend you believe at all what any of the Founding Fathers believed. And of course, the list wouldn't be complete without mentioning a, a particularly radical anarchist-type document called the Declaration of Independence that says that whenever any government becomes destructive of individual liberty, it is the right and duty of the people to alter or abolish it. Now, do you think they meant ask nicely? Well, what did they do right after they wrote the Declaration of Independence? They shot at law enforcers. Ever heard of the uh, Battle of Lexington, the shot heard around the world? The law enforcers said, lay down your guns. And they didn't. 
They didn't say, well, we're going to petition the king. They didn't say, well, we're going to vote. They said, no. And if you want to have a shootout, we're going to have a shootout. So there's another bunch of people you can condemn if you don't like the discussion about when to resist legal tyranny. Now, just to add to the list of people you should condemn and never associate with, uh, how about the Supreme Court of the United States? Uh, check out their ruling in John Bad Elk versus United States, where they ruled that using even deadly force against a law enforcer, if he's acting outside of his authority, isn't necessarily a crime at all. So you better shun them, because they talked about it too. Of course, the list goes on and on forever. Basically, anybody who's ever had a brain has understood that if you want freedom, you have to retain the ability and willingness to forcibly resist people who want to enslave you. Maybe, maybe this is more of the attitude that, that you'd like to adopt and, and proudly wear on your chest. Citizens who wanted to use firearms should become law enforcers because ordinary citizens don't need guns as their having guns doesn't serve the state. That's Heinrich Himmler. So if you're like Glenn Beck or the mainstream media, right or left, doesn't make any difference, or the Kershaw County Republican Party, and you want to side with the attitude of Stalin and Lenin and Mao and Hitler and Pol Pot and all of them, who were very big on not having the people forcibly resist law enforcement, if you want to side with them instead of siding with those wackos like Washington and Jefferson and Madison and Hamilton and all them, be my guest. But don't pretend you care about what this country was founded on. Don't pretend you care about liberty. Don't pretend you believe in unalienable rights at all. Because if it's your position that it is never okay to forcibly resist anything that government does, you don't believe in unalienable rights. Glenn Beck, you don't believe in unalienable rights if you don't believe that it's ever justified to use physical violence against evil committed in the name of law. Most of all, to those of you out there, the Republican Party pretends to care about the Second Amendment. Conservatives pretend to care about the Second Amendment. If you cannot enter the discussion of at what point should we resist by force, you don't believe in the Second Amendment. You don't believe what the founders believed. The Second Amendment wasn't written so that if things get really bad, we can run off and duck hunt. It was written so if things get really bad, the people can kill government agents. And I know it's not a pleasant topic, but if you're too much of a chicken turd to think about it and talk about it in serious, real terms, and you think, oh, just run away, do as you're told, just do as you're told, I would never advocate that, you will be a slave forever. If you really and truly believe that you never have the right to stand up against oppression as long as it's called law, you're doomed. You will never be free. You're not even free inside your own head. So if you're like the Kershaw County Republicans or The Blaze or all these mainstream newspapers that had a tantrum over the article, probably without reading it, or Glenn Beck saying, this is dangerous, if you're one of those people who think, that's horrible to ever even discuss using physical violence against law enforcers. Okay, you can believe that. Crawl back into your cage, it's okay. Just don't pretend you believe in freedom. Don't pretend you believe in unalienable rights. Don't pretend you believe in the Constitution and the Second Amendment, because you don't. If you really are of the, the mindset that whatever government does to you, it is never okay to forcibly resist, you're a slave, and you will be a slave forever.